The Nation today has published an article on how President Ruto has failed his promise to protect his deputy Rigathi Gashagwa from petty political fights. Even more, the political marriage between Rigathi Gashagwa and William Ruto seems to be on the losing end. And the writings are very much clear on the wall. Welcome to the Bold Analysis. My name is Frank. From how Gashagwa failed to attend 11 state functions, his denial to use military aircrafts and the Mount Kenya turbulence, and him taking the political fights to Ruto's political doorsteps, that is in U.S. in Gishu County, is nothing but a major political shakeup that is going to make the developments even more divisive. About three years ago, in the run-up to the general elections in 2022, William Ruto, while being interviewed on Citizen TV at his official current uh, residence, when he was the deputy president of this republic, he accused his then boss, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta, and launched scathing attacks on Kenyatta of how Kenyatta wouldn't allow him to enjoy his privileges as the deputy president of Kenya. And he promised them that if elected the president of Kenya, then he would never allow his deputy to undergo what he went. But now what is happening is contrary to his uh, philosophical point of view. There is this, that is the video of William Ruto in current by then. Um, let me tell you, Linus, you know, the president has broken no law. He has just chosen a different style. And it is his prerogative. My space is to advise the president. And which advice, when sought, I have been very forthright and very honest about. And uh, if the president decides to deliver government business in a different way and um, elevate other people, you know, consult more with the leader or the former leader of the opposition and work with uh, other ministers uh, to deliver government business, I have taken it with grace. You know, I, 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 uh, I haven't had you've, had, you've had, you've not had me complain because of the respect I have for the office of the president. And I have, uh, I can do other things. I, I can support government in doing whatever else that uh, the president feels I, I can support. But maybe when you get an opportunity, Linus, I think these are questions you may want to ask the president himself. After watching the video, we want to look at the reasons as to why the sharp division between Rigathi Gashagwa and William Ruto could be as well as the end of their political union, of course, which is a union of coincidence. Number one, the first reason as to why that might as well signal the end of their political union is the choice for a new deputy president come 2027. And this is something that has not been augering well with regard to Gashagwa, especially when Ruto made some remarks some months ago that going forward, the UDS political mantra and philosophy would be that if the president is a gent, then the deputy should be a lady. This is something that then it is when it did not augur well with regard to Gashagwa. And there is also the factor under this, that Rigathi Gashagwa was handpicked at the last minute with William Ruto. So, if he was handpicked at the last minute, and you remember, this supposed that he was jousting for jointly with a close competitor who was Kithure Kindiki, who was by then a senator. So, if Ruto was to choose a new deputy president in 2027, then it is something that has signaled on Rigathi Gashagwa's head that if this is to happen, then this should, uh, should get me when I'm 
prepared and ready for the same shock. So, this, if it might happen, then it might be a case of use and dump. Another reason behind this, the first point that choice for a new deputy president in 2027, it would also mean that, uh, with especially, not mean, but the emergence of new political loyalists in the mountain could push for a new choice of the deputy come 2027. We've seen the likes of youthful MPs such as Ndindi Nyoro go around in Mount Kenya under the operatives that they've been sent by the president. When, in the same situation, the president has a principal assistant who is the deputy president and is a senior member or is a senior leader from the region whom he could also be assigning these duties that he assigns, that he assigns the likes of Ndindi Nyoro. And the entrance of new political uh, fiascos or leaders like Anwai Guru, of course, and Dindi Nyora, if you have stated, is something that is worrying the deputy president. Anwai Guru even launched an attack on the deputy president when they were on a plane on their way to America, on the same plane seated with the president, and he, she did attack the deputy president over the deputy president's political stance. Number two is regard this political extravagance. This is something that has exposed him and the operatives around Ruto and even Ruto himself is watching this closely. His, why are we saying his political extravagance must, uh, might or will be a contribution to the end of their political union? It is because the deputy president did show his early political ambitions. He showed his early political ambitions and his intent from the word go was to be a Mount Kenya kingpin or to be a major political consideration factor going forward and especially when the debate or talks around 2027 second term will be held, then he shall be having some demands that should be made for him to support Ruto. So this is something that operatives around Ruto did notice. So this he might blame on himself, showing his early political ambitions as to where he wants to be or where he wants to go. And especially also his intent to make it clear that come 2032, Ruto has no choice but to support him as the president. So, this is something that might have contributed to this. And early political, uh, early political uh, ambitions could also be paid on even recently when the budget making process was there, he had a huge demand for budgetary allocations for his office and things like he wants his office to be furnished so that it could be a new center of the deputy president's political power and might. So still on this, when they were getting into this union, to regarding Shagwa maybe, he thought that him and Ruto being elected on a joint ticket as the president and the deputy president respectively would mean that they would be enjoying equal powers throughout. And this one, there is no way that it could have operated because the president is the president and the boss is the boss. There can never be two bosses. And if there is one boss, then it means that the boss needs subordinates who are answerable to him and show him loyalty. Still on this, he also flexed his political muscles at a time when it was too early. You remember him going around the mountain trying to consolidate the mountain region block. So this is something that to a smart politician like William Ruto, it is something that he must move to term in his earliest budding processes. Another reason as to why the marriage between Ruto and Gashagwa might be on the losing brink or might be on the end is because of the Mount Kenya unity factor and the forces like who takes over the Mount Kenya kingship, the Udamaki of Mount Kenya. So, we know very well that in the 2022 general elections, Mount Kenya did not have a solid political party that they went with to the table to negotiate. So, to William Ruto, he knows that if Mount Kenya would otherwise decide to be united today and they unite behind one regarding Gashagwa, then if their political 
union might be experiencing some might be experiencing uh, some turbulence then it would be hard for him to convince the voters from Mount Kenya region to vote for him if he will not be on good terms with the Rigathi Gashagwa. So that Mount Kenya unity factor is something that maybe Ruto has calculated and seen that in the event or in the eventuality that this happens, then it should get when I'm ready politically for this and I can take this on politically, such that it doesn't disjoint my wish to be a second term president come 2027. Also still on this, that is why he is trying to use the divide and rule. That is why he is trying to front young political leaders like Nini Nyoro, Moses Kuria, to push that division factor in Mount Kenya such that Rigathi Gashagwa doesn't hold on to the political grip strongly in his hands. This one can be attested to the fact that Recently, Rigathi Gashagwa has been moving around the mountain region and even on campaigns like substance and drug abuse and taking the plights of the farmers from the region. It is something that to operatives around Ruto, they've seen that this is a clear scheme for Rigathi trying to consolidate his grip around the mountain. Another reason as to why this marriage might be on the losing end is because of the operatives around the president. The, this, has, this is something that has been happening in this country historically. That usually the operatives around the presidents always try to curtail the powers of their deputies. Such that they are not people who are over influential in the respective governments. And this has been clear even to people around Ruto. We've seen the likes of Oscar Sudi getting verbal exchange with Rigathi Gashagwa on certain matters. So to them, they want to protect that presidential circle, so that the pre deputy president isn't somebody who has so much powers over them. Rather, they would rather want that they be the people who have so much powers on how the president can be accessed and on who can talk to the president. Even constitutionally, this might be a contributing factor, the constitution still on this, because the constitution stipulates that the deputy president is the principal assistant, assistant rather, to the president. And that the, might, the president might designate him some functions and powers as the president may wish. So this is something that clearly the operatives must also have capitalized on this and advised the, presidents, the president rather to keep regarding at manageable arms such that he doesn't get so much of his influence around the presidency. And that is a mistake that even Uhuru Kenyatta did. Is that during their first term, he allowed Ruto to access the government in and out. And once Ruto had this, even when the union was not at peace, he was very much comfortable because he knew his ways around the power. And that is why even with the deep state and system, Uhuru Kenyatta did not, wasn't able to convince the voters from Mount Kenya to vote for his preferred presidential candidate because Ruto has had mastered his way around the government. So this is something that Ruto being a smart politician that he, he, he was in 2022 wouldn't allow for a repeat of in 2027. That is the end of our analysis. We would like to remind you to continue subscribing to our YouTube channel in case you are new here and you can turn on the notification bell so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever we upload new content.